قضى ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع الله يسر إن مع الله يسر الله أكبر They are praying to the gods with their bodies bent toward the earth. Back from a long journey, the elders sit around a fire in the middle of the desert. هو يشابط من شابط في الآخر قد ما تغلبت تغلب عليا رح يشيعني بالقلم رح واحد أشبط طويل كده This is a story from a long time ago About the river that moistened the land and gave life the sky, the earth and the winds and the houses that man has been creating ever since ancient times. A sand dune in the desert. A very old village in the midst of the Sahara. A man needs to endure the strong winds and walk thousands of miles relying only on the constellations in the night sky to reach this village. The dry land with brittle plants and no sign of cattle. It's amazing that people have been living in this barren desert for hundreds of years building houses. For the spirits of the living and the dead, they dug up mud deep inside the sand dune and carefully built a temple. The house is simple but strong enough to withstand the savage winds. The decoration above the front door, that was a sign of respect for the earth and the gods. Arawan is one of the few oases in the Sahara, a desert station of life and survival where caravans crossing the desert must stop. <laughs> Traveling 600 kilometers from Tawadeni, Caravans arrive here after a half-month journey. Here, they find water and the tired camels rest. In the dry season from November to April, caravans carrying salt come here to rest for the following 10-day journey.
we followed the caravans to Timbuktu. Timbuktu is an ancient city located in the south side of the Sahara and in the northeast side of Mali in West Africa. This city, built by the Tuareg tribe, the descendants of the nomads that dominated the desert in their time, had been the center of trade through the Sahara, filled with merchants and goods, even until the 16th century. Salt, gold, ivory, and carpets were distributed to the Mediterranean Sea and Europe from here. Timbuktu used to be called the city of wealth and gold and the land of mystery in the Sahara. There is an interesting story of how the city of gold, Timbuktu, got its name. In the 12th century, a woman from the Tureg tribe named Buktu built a well, and people began to call this city the pond of Buktu, or Timbuktu. the biggest Islamic festival, Tabaski. Every February, the people of Timbuktu choose the most handsome lamb to sacrifice and pay respect to Allah. Tabaski is the day that upon God's command, Abraham sacrificed a lamb as a substitute for his son. They paint their foreheads with the lamb's blood, believing that Allah will protect them from disease and bad luck. Timbuktu is not only a city of commerce, but also the largest center of art and culture in West Africa. Muslim scholars settled here, and studies of the Quran, mathematics, and astronomy flourished. There were more than 200 schools, such as this one, teaching the Quran in the 16th century. The Golden Age of Timbuktu. The Jingareba Temple stands in the center. According to the archives, the royal family of Mali brought Abu Isa Esare of Andalusia, Spain, with them on the way back home through Egypt in 1325 and asked him to build this temple. Incredibly, everything about Jingareba Temple is made of mud. The 10-meter outer wall has preserved the feel of earth while being plastered and decorated. The round minaret shaped in geometric and smooth curves stands in the center of the outer wall. The pyramid-like minaret in the center shows that the architectural style was influenced by Egypt. The branches that act as supports are used as stairs when plastering the wall. 
The unique building technique of Jingareba Temple, built in the 14th century, was spread to other parts of West Africa and became the origin of the earth architecture that represents the Islamic culture here. Leaving Timbuktu, our journey continues along the river. The Niger is a river still abound with primitive life force. This river originates in Guinea in West Africa and connects Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger and Nigeria. It was the river for trade and the river of gold. At one time, a number of kingdoms and cities were established along this river, giving birth to unique architectural styles made of earth. A typical example is Djenne, a small city of Mali located on the Niger riverside. This place is crowded with merchants coming from many places, and it used to be one of the biggest cities in West Africa. Djenne developed into a hub city of trade through the Sahara while connected to Timbuktu along the Niger River. It was also an important hub for salt. people created some of the greatest architecture of the world in the center of Jenna in the 18th century. A magnificent building standing 20 meters high. People call this holy structure the Great Mosque. If Jingareba in Timbuktu is the oldest temple, Jenna's Great Mosque is the largest temple in the world made of earth. <laughs> To build this temple, workers piled up clay bricks, inserted wooden crossbeams between the bricks, and used them to build higher floors. Then they finished the outer wall by rubbing and patting it with their hands with the mud drawn from the riverside. Even private tombs were made with earth. This temple, built by the people of Jenne, is known as one of the most beautiful buildings in the world. The Dra Valley in southern Morocco. This is the last course of the river under the Atlas Mountains and before the Western Sahara begins. It had been thickly covered with date palms and farmers used to plow the fields with donkeys under the clay walls. This river is slowly vanishing. The legendary Dra River, which used to wind its way through the desert toward the Atlantic Ocean, is slowly drying out. But still, the legend of Dra River can be seen in a huge 18th century mansion called the Kasbah, a fortress standing on the ravines and hills A huge citadel, 
preserving its majestic scenery. How did they manage to build these huge buildings? The method is rather simple. First, they gathered up the mud in the area into a mold and hardened it. When a block was made, the mold was removed and hardened again. The frame method, in other words, TJ, required only damp mud, wooden frames, and a pestle. That was all they needed in the past and all they need today. It's the most traditional building method of mankind. At the end of the draw valley, there is a wonderful and panoramic scene. This village reflects strong colors created by the mud and is surrounded by large and beautiful houses like a strong fortress. The name of this village is Ait Ben Hadou. When walking into the village, one is surprised by the mud skyscrapers. Four to five story buildings are common and there are also many groups of six to seven story buildings. The upper part of the building is decorated with beautiful geometric patterns made by mud bricks or scratching the wall. Ben Hadou was built by a man from the desert. His name was Isaac and the villagers still consider themselves descendants of Isaac. These houses are connected here and there, like a maze. This wide but complex interior structure implies that it was once inhabited by many families. At one time, there were about 400 people in Ben Hadou, but most of them have left the village. Only the elderly remain, preserving the memories from the past. These houses, alleyways, and the plaza 
were filled with people just 30 years ago. This village was also the background for the movie Lawrence of Arabia and Jesus of Nazareth. Hamadi Rashin is 40 years old this year. He was born here and lives in this house with his wife and four children. Hamadi is a farmer and he sometimes needs mud and makes bricks. Piling up bricks one by one and mortaring the wall with mud to build a room is very simple work that doesn't take too much skill. It's also important to repair the outer wall to prepare for the rainy season. Suad is 17 years old this year. She has been using this room for seven years. It's a cozy place where the sunlight through the window caresses the carpet and the mud wall. Suad is a pro at housework, helping her mother take care of the house as well as her younger brothers and sisters, but she is still a shy country girl. <laughs> There is a special place in this house, only used for special days. One might expect to find a magic lamp from Arabian Nights hidden inside. When they have guests, they receive their guests here. It is a secret cave they built by digging up the mud. It preserves the family's long history. Therefore, Suad's family's love for this cave is very special. <laughs> Oh. 
People leave, and yet the family remains. The purity and health of the children's laughter resembles the dark red of the mud. Aid Ben Hadou is the cradle of the world's architecture and is registered as a World Heritage Site. But now, the glory and legend of Ben Hadou is slowly disappearing, carried away on the winds from the desert. November in Africa, the dry season begins. In West Africa, there is a country that borders on Ghana. It is called Burkina Faso. A little village called Tangasogu is located in the bordering area. The native tribe, the Gurunshi, live in this village, and this is the native Gurunshi's mud house. <laughs> there are hundreds of tribes in Africa, and the Gurunshi have the most unique way of living by building houses. They are a farming rather than a hunting tribe. The shape of this house, which is said to be over a century old, is interesting in many ways. The women's rooms have very narrow entrances and sills inside. They are devices to defend women against the enemy in times of intertribal warfare. The entrance is narrow, but the inside is wide and beautiful and filled with daily household goods. The sunlight through the ventilation ducts prevents crops from rotting, and the interior wall that looks stronger than a rock shows splendid patterns.
the smooth curves of the water jar in one corner of the room. The high sill of the room leading outside. And the men's room. Everything is made of mud.